All right, I'm not on the 10 minute clock yet. It has not started yet, but I cannot. I can't resist looking at the Cleveland Marathon results. We're gonna look at them at the same time right now. How fast did the leaders run? I'm so curious. Okay, hold on. One second here, Let me, here we go. Marathon, all, all, okay. Interesting. Okay, well, uh, looks like, at least what I'm looking at right now, first place, two hours and 22 minutes and two seconds. Edwin uh, Kimeo. So that is really interesting. Third place was four minutes back at two hours and 26 minutes. All right, so there you go. Those are the Cleveland results. Anyway, we'll get it. We're gonna get it. All right, into the gym. I'll get you the 10 tips for running here in a minute. Let's go get our, let's go get our jog on in that pool. All right, back from the rec center, solid day of cross training. It was a good day, but uh, I must say I was a little distracted, didn't do any filming. Uh, I was a little distracted because I was thinking about Cleveland. Uh, first of all, the winning time, 2.22, but more importantly, shout out to, I think there was at least a half a dozen people who watch this channel on a regular basis who was racing the Cleveland Marathon today. Congratulations if you raced today. If you did, you gotta let us know down in the comments how it went for you, what were the conditions like, how was the overall race experience. I'm just, uh, ex I was sad obviously not to be there, but so excited that some of the viewers out there were able to complete a marathon. It's a big, big deal. So, okay, here we go. 10 tips in 10 minutes. Now listen, I've been known to be a little long-winded, so that's why I'm putting a 10-minute cap, and you know us runners, we like to uh, race against the clock, right? So I'm putting a 10-minute cap on these 10 tips. These tips are not in any particular order. You better believe tips is the key word. And these 10 running tips, some of them are obvious, maybe some of them won't be quite as obvious, and some of them are just simple reminders for us as runners as we pursue our goals and our dreams. And I realize there's veterans watching this channel who have been running for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And so you're probably gonna be like, okay, that was a pretty obvious tip, but there's also some new runners who have just joined up in this running world. And it's just amazing that I, I continue to be amazed when a, a runner comments down below and they tell me that I've been, I'm 60 years old and I just started running. Like that gets me so excited. So anyway, welcome to you if you are a new runner. I hope these 10 tips help. And yes, over the next 10 minutes, I will be glancing down at my phone quite a bit because I have a lot of notes. There's a lot of tips here. Let's dive in. All right, hitting the start button on the timer now. All right, it's rolling. Okay, tip number one. Be patient in learning the running environment around you. It took me a long time after graduating from college where in Boulder, Colorado, it's a running mecca. A lot of Olympians train in Boulder. It's got trails everywhere. You have easy access to high altitudes. Uh, so when I moved to Denver and to this house, it took me at least two to three years to really feel confident in where I should be running for dirt, for, and now uh, seeking out a track, uh, figuring out where is a good 15 mile loop, where is a good 20 mile loop right from my house. So anyway, just be patient. If you feel a little uh, sad that you might live in a location that doesn't have great access to great running, I'm telling you, just be patient. There is great running everywhere and there's beauty everywhere. You know what I mean? Even if you live in Tokyo or New York City, like there's beauty everywhere to seek out while we are running. Okay, tip number two, remember your health. And I don't mean injuries. I'm talking about the long-term benefit of being a runner. We are going to be healthier long-term if we are running on a consistent basis. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a lot of ad advertisements on Facebook for life insurance. I get them all the time. And basically, it's the, the ad says, if, I, if you can run under a nine minute mile, you get a reduced rate uh, for your life insurance. I'm not sure if I believe that really. I don't know, maybe sometime I should look into it. But anyway, 
if you are running consistently, you will be healthy long-term and you're putting bank deposits in your long-term health. It's a good thing and it might be something to bring up with your uh, your invest. If you have a, a financial investor, like you might live longer and you might need a plan for that in your retirement. That's all I'm saying, okay? So it's a good thing. Okay, moving on. Tip number three, learn your running shoe preference early. So neutral or stability, high drop or low drop. Um, do you prefer high stack heights or low stack heights, meaning more cushion or less cushion? And if you're one, if you're a little confused by running shoe terms, go check out that this vlog upper right hand corner, click on that card and I lay out all of the very important running shoe terms that you should know before your next visit at a running shoe store. And if you know the running shoe that you're looking for and you like, you really love that type of running shoe, you will save time and money in like whether you're buying online or in person in a store because you're just you're dialed into what really works for you all right moving on tip number four uh run run different routes so i think one issue that can pop up in endurance sports as a whole but especially running is burnout where we get excited about running maybe you're new to running and you're really excited but then after six months of training 18 months of training you start to get a little burned out well a, a quick a quick fix for that might be simply changing where you run so go drive to a park that's a little further away from your house or maybe you just need to try a different route uh, from your house or I like to call it the mystery run, meaning you literally have no plan as to where you're gonna run. You literally just start running. It is so fun, and I bet it will reignite your passion for running, okay? And you might have to do it consistently, like out of an entire month of training, maybe four times you do a mystery run just to change it up a little. Okay, that's tip number four. Tip number five, oh, <laughs> track your running now, I would do anything, anything to look at my high school training log uh, right now as a 33 year old. I did not track my running very close in high school. And frankly, until I was on Strava, I wasn't even tracking my running very closely like, th uh, pr like from the time I was basically 26 to 29 and now I'm 33 I would do so track your running in a in a in a journal track your running somehow whether it's electronically or paper doesn't matter uh, anyway now I track all my running on Strava and and it's really beneficial because you can learn from good training blocks and not so good training blocks like why injuries might have popped up so really really important track your running now you won't regret it 20 years from now 30 years from now. Okay, moving on. Tip number six. Oh, this is an interesting one. Look to the past or appreciate the past, meaning look to the history of running and the people who have come before us and the runners who have blazed the trail before us and who have really laid the groundwork for what training works and what training doesn't work. Um, I'm a big fan, as many of you know, of Arthur Lydiard, a gentleman who grew, well, who, who coached in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even the 80s in New Zealand, really laid a lot of the groundwork for long distance running. So I have a great appreciation uh, for him. Uh, but now also looking to the elites of the present day, it's just good to know and understand our sport so that we can be avid fans and support the sport and watch the London Marathon or watch the New York City Marathon. And that is what allows this sport to thrive and to move forward in a healthy way. Okay, moving on. Tip number seven. I got to move on here. Don't ignore the niggles and don't train through the, the pains. Now, soreness is definitely different than a niggle or an ache. Now, a, it's... <laughs> It's a fine line, but don't ignore those aches and pains. Sorry, yeah, don't ignore those aches and pains. Soreness is a good thing, but you don't want a pain to turn into something more. That's kind of what happened with my injury right now, and I'm, kind of, I'm paying for it right now. So that is tip number seven. Don't ignore the niggles, and don't, definitely don't train through them. 
Um, just give it, give it patience when they do pop up. Okay. Tip number eight, patience and persistence pays off, AKA consistency. One of the greatest ways to build up your aerobic endurance is to train consistently. So rather than getting injured, that this is time off where I am, oh, okay, I know I'm doing cross training, but it is a little different than uh, hitting the pool, or sorry, hitting a 20 mile long, it's just different. So the more consistent you can be in your aerobic development, the more endurance you're gonna build over the long haul. So that is, this is a huge, huge uh, thing to remember as you are laying out your training plan. Don't forget that it's better to be consistent over the long, especially if you're shooting for like, if you wanna run marathons down the road and ultra marathons, just be patient and persistent in your training now. Okay, moving on. I'm doing pretty good on time here. Moving on. I think I'm on. Here we go. Tip number nine. Yeah, why not? Dream big. I'm just going to call it now. Uh, I was a 16, 27 guy in high school and I was able to walk on to the CU cross country team. Now, I think the standards have gotten a little tougher since I was in college, uh, but don't be afraid to dream. And why? Why? Because dreams are what make this world, in my humble opinion, exciting and fun and something to live for. Every, like it gives our day purpose as runners. I think we have a leg up on the rest of society because we have little goals to shoot for every single day and every single month and every single training block. So whether it's a Boston qualifier or getting into the New York City Marathon or a 5K PR or, or losing 100 pounds. That's right. If you are maybe a little overweight and you're like, gosh, I need to lose 100 pounds or 50 pounds or whatever it might be. And yes, I know there's people out there who watch this vlog who have said, have told me down in the comments and emailed me and I've met people in person, right? Luke and uh, Jason who have lost 100 pounds and they watch this channel like it's amazing. So anyway, don't be afraid to dream. If you feel like you are, you are struggling to chase down a dream, don't be afraid to dream. It's amazing. Okay. Oh my gosh. I got to go quick. Tip number 10, learn to have fun with running. Listen, be patient in your running. Um, it's going to get more fun the more fit you become. I promise. I promise. I promise. Just like fun. It, learn, to, learn to have fun. Okay. I've got eight seconds, seven seconds. This sport is fun. I love it. You know what it's all about. And that is a wrap for 10, 10 tips for running. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I did it. Okay. You know how I can get a little long winded sometimes. So I pulled it off. That 10th tip was a quick one, but I hope I got the point across. I love you guys. Thank you for bearing with me. Tips is the keyword question of the day. What tips do you want to share? Share anything. That was my top 10. And listen, I, um, those tips I could add, I could do another 10, but, uh, anyway, that is a question of the day. What tips would you add down in the comments below? I'm a little out of breath. Got to get a drink of water. All right. Seek beauty, work hard and love each other. What's feeling good. What's feeling good. See you tomorrow. Stop.